Yeah, I keep telling her if you want to get max customization, you really got to start using the EXR files. Hey, what's that on your neck? Whose neck? Your neck. I think it's a mole. It doesn't look like a mole. It feels like a mole. Yeah, but it's beeping and flashing though. Might not be a mole. What you just saw was rendered using Blender and After Effects and is inspired by this shot from the boys. Uh, man, your nose. I'm Wyatt with Action VFX, and I'm going to show you how easy it was to make this shot using After Effects, Blender, and a few assets from our store. Let's just jump right into it. First things first, we gotta shoot this. Let's set our camera up on a tripod outside, that way it's not only easy to mask out our exploding head, but also split our frame down the middle for this specific shot where there's two of me. Once you have that shot figured out, next thing to take care of is the lighting. There's a lot of harsh directional light due to the sun, so I needed diffusion. I didn't have diffusion, so I set up a background stand and clamped some old shower curtains to it. But due to the positioning of the sun and the limitations of my DIY diffusion, I did have to awkwardly crouch so I would be in frame. After that, act out your head exploding, drop to your knees, and then run out of frame to get a clean plate. This was done for both shots, the only caveat being with the second shot I had to swap my shirt and stand on the opposite side of frame. And by the way, making sure nothing crosses that center line of frame can make it a little easier to do the effect because you won't have to rotoscope any overlap. After that, we got a shot of the blood splattering on my face. Oh! There are a couple reasons for doing this. The first one is that we can take the footage of the practical blood on set and use it to color match the CGI blood. It'll help the blood look more realistic and blend better into the shot. The second reason being is that any digital effect looks a little better with the practical added in. So by having that blood hit me in the face, it makes the CGI blood look like it's actually in the scene. Once you have all that, you're ready to rock and roll. Our first effect is going to be the flashing light on the explosive device attached to his neck. For the practical explosive device, it's just a metal washer stuck to my neck with some spirit. Then I brought my footage into After Effects, went up to Layer, New, and created a new null object. I retitled this to Neck Track as this is where our tracking information will be stored. Then with our base footage selected, we're going to go up to Animation, Track and Boris FX Mocha, and then select the Launch Mocha button. Inside of Mocha, we'll use the pen tool to mask out the center of the washer. Then we'll track backwards. Once that's done, save your project and return to After Effects. Open the tracking data menu and create track data. Set the export option to corner pins supporting motion blur and set the layer export to your neck tracking null object and then apply export. Then we'll want to go up to layer and create a new solid. Make it white and hit OK. This will be the center glow for the washer. Now with it turned off, you can mask out the center of the ring, turn visibility back on, and feather it out. Right click and enable it as a 3D layer. Then you can pick whip the parent and link to the neck track null object. Enable motion blur and then we'll bring in our lens flare. We're going to grab that from our anamorphic lens flare pack available at actionvfx.com. For this, we're going to use Icon 45. With our asset in, the first thing we'll do is set the blending mode to screen. Then with the lens flare selected, go up to Effect, Color Correction, and add Hue and Saturation. This will allow you to adjust the color of the lens flare to however you'd like. Reposition and scale as needed, right click and enable as a 3D layer. Then pick whip this to your null object track as well. Since we had a beeping noise accompanying it, you can right click your lens flare, go up to Time, and enable Time Remapping. Using keyframes, you can readjust the speed of the lens flare to be in sync with the audio. Duplicate your lens flare if needed to fill out the runtime of the shot, turn on motion blur, and you're set. Time out, sorry, didn't mean to interrupt the video, but did you know ActionVFX.com is the world's largest library of high quality 2D and 3D assets for film and television? No? Well now you do. Link down below to check it out, and while you're here, if you don't mind, like and subscribe. Thank you. Starting off, we're going to bring our footage into After Effects. We have me acting out the head explosion, as well as a clean plate. First step is to find the frame where we want the explosion to occur. Hit Ctrl Shift D to split the shot, and then using the pen tool, mask out your head. You can hit M on your keyboard to bring up mask options. Then by right clicking that, you can select track mask. Analyze forward and make adjustments as needed. 
Using the mask expansion, you can extend the mask out to make sure that the entire head is gone. It's going to be specific to your shot, but in this case we'll want to remove everything down to the neckline on the shirt. That way we can easily bring in our 3D render. Next I'm going to bring in my clone. We have this matching shot with me standing on the opposite side. And once it's lined up, all we have to do is mask down the middle with the pen tool. Again, make adjustments as needed in Feather. Next, we're going to bring in a blood asset from our blood hits pack. This is Blood Burst 1. We'll scale and reposition, and then we'll add a hue and saturation effect. Adjust to a look you're happy with, and then you can also make adjustments with levels, which I'll be going over shortly. But before that, we're going to bring in another blood hit. Blood Burst 23, and scale and reposition that as well. Color correct it too, and then I want this to shoot out at the camera. So first, make sure this box is checked to enable it as a 3D layer. Then we're going to hit P on our keyboard to bring up position options. Click the stopwatch at the start of the clip, and then scrub forward a few frames, and reposition so that it moves past camera. Then we'll go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, and add a Radial Blur. Set the type to zoom and adjust the amount by eye. Now I want to make some face pieces to explode. So what I'm going to do is duplicate the base layer and rename it to face piece. I'll set it to freeze frame on a clear shot of the head and then duplicate it several times. On each piece, use the pen tool to mask out a different section of the face. Then by hitting the position stopwatch, we can animate this to fly off over the next few frames. We can repeat the 3D process we did with the blood to allow a flesh bit to fly past the camera as well. And to enhance this further, I'm bringing in a few Blood Mist assets from our Blood Mist Volume 2 pack. I'll scale and reposition as needed, and then I reverse this one to be able to have a mist spray going to the left. And with the final mist cloud added, this is what it looks like. Once you have your headless torso, we're going to recruit our 3D guru Tom to generate my head exploding in Blender. Wow, look at that. Want to learn how to do it on your own? There's a very similar tutorial done by Peter France inside of Blender. I will note Tom used Ken tools to make it a little bit smoother. Follow along with that, it'll be linked down below. With our exploded head brought in, we'll need to make some slight adjustments to help with the composite. Some slight masking here, and then we're going to bring back some of the shoulder that's being cut off. We'll duplicate our base footage, rename it to shoulder mask, and then with the opacity lowered to help with visibility, mask our shoulder back in and track it. Color match this a little more, we'll go up to effect, color correction, and add a levels effect. By adjusting the color of our viewport, we can adjust the corresponding red, green, and blue channels so that we get a good match. Then we'll add a Gaussian blur and set this to 5. Now for our drop shadow. We want to duplicate our exploded head and add a tints effect. Map white to black and crank up the Gaussian blur. Then bring down the opacity as needed, keyframing it to appear as the head explodes. Then we duplicate the original head exploded render again, bring it to the top, and mask it over our shadow layer. This way, our shadow is shown below the render, but still on top of the shoulder section we mask back in. Moving on, we're going to be using Vertical Bleeding Cut 3 from our Bleeding Fabric collection. Real quick, we're going to time remap to speed it up a little. After that, scale and reposition it under all our blood and chunks, and then using the pen tool, mask it to keep it just visible on the shirt. Set the blending mode to overlay, and then we need tracking data. Create a new null object for your track, add Boris FX Mocha to your base footage, and repeat all the steps from earlier. Enable our fabric bleed as a 3D layer and parent it to your track. Now go up to layer and create a new adjustment layer. Add a CC radial blur, set it to straight zoom, and place the center on your face. Keyframe the amount to start at zero, increase during the peak of the explosion, and then decrease back down to zero. Highlight the keyframes and add easy ease. Then we'll create an elliptical mask on the adjustment layer around my head and crank up the feather. Keyframe the mask expansion to expand over the course of the explosion and you're set. Precompose everything and then hit A to bring up the anchor point. I'll click the stopwatch and type in the expression wiggle open bracket 1 comma 12 close bracket. Do the same with the rotation, this time typing wiggle open bracket 1 comma 0.5 close bracket. Then scale up a little to get rid of any black edges. This adds a light camera shake that brings a kind of handheld feel and doesn't make it look like a locked off tripod shot. But we want to add a little extra violent shake to this burst, so we're going to hit B to bring up position options, hit the stopwatch at the start of your burst, and then scrub through moving the position every few frames. Highlight all those keyframes and add easy ease, and then we're going to utilize our Blood Burst 23 one more time to have some lens splatter. 
set it up and animate it to fly at the screen, but not past it. You want to use time remapping to freeze it right as the blood is nice and full, lining up the freeze with the moment of impact with the lens. Then we'll add a levels effect to darken it a little. Also make sure motion blur is enabled. And then the last thing is to add a camera lens blur effect and keyframe this to start at zero and increase until the moment it hits the lens. And with that, we're finished with our shot. Our last step is gonna to be to add some brain splattered around the grass. With our second shot, we repeated pretty much all the steps from the first shot, along with a few additional touches. This includes getting another render from Tom. Our first addition is streams of blood running down. To do that, we're gonna grab Severed Neck 6 from our Severed Necks and Limbs pack. First, link this to our tracking data, and then we're gonna use an elliptical mask to isolate the blood that's just on the torso. Then duplicate your layer and set the mask on the duplicate to subtract. Reposition it to line up and then do any color adjustments that are needed and make sure motion blur is enabled. Now you'll notice our blood has a cropped edge. To get around this, duplicate your severed neck asset, the one with the mask set to add, and reposition so our stream lines up to be extended. Then we'll mask out the thin portion we want and feather. Next, to add some meaty chunks sitting on the grass. We're gonna take a still from one of the renders Tom made for us and mask out just a chunk of meat. Rescale in position and then go to layer, layer styles, and add a drop shadow. Now we're gonna grab a bulrush grass asset from our flowers and grasses pack, bring this in, scale it down, and place it over our meaty chunk. Duplicate enough times to cover the base and then add in a tint effect. Set map white to black and copy and paste this effect to the rest of the grass. Then pre-compose all the grass assets, set our meat chunks track mat to the grass, and invert the mask. Now the meat looks like it's sitting in the scene. Then we'll pre-compose everything in this comp and add our digital camera moves back in. And that's it. Just like that, we've recreated some shots from the boys using Blender, After Effects, and a few assets from ActionVFX.com. Which, if you'd like to check out our ever-expanding catalog of 2D and 3D assets, the link is down below. And are you looking to learn? Our practice footage library allows you to test your abilities with our cinematic footage for no cost. And want to see what else our assets can be used for? Hit that subscribe button and click that bell notification to never miss a new tutorial. Comment down below what else you'd like to see from us, and with that, I'll see you on the next one.